What is going on guys, Judo Sloth here and welcome to the first episode of the Pro Tips Series Live. This is Lava Loon by Expert DJ of Elite Gaming. How this will work, we're going to be live for around about one hour. You guys can obviously watch this back as a video. We have a few questions from myself, from the community that has already been asked that we're going to ask DJ any questions you have, drop them in the chat as well. And then he's going to attack my base. You can see it getting crushed in the background already. I'm going to attack him. People in the clan here can have their attacks analyzed by a Lava Loon Pro. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the channel. We will try and bring this series as much as possible. But without further ado, why don't we introduce you to DJ? What's going on, my man? Thank you for joining us. Hey Judo, thanks for the big intro. This is DJ Clan Smasher and before I start, I just wanted to give a big shout out to Elite Gaming and Elite Nation and especially all the fans that I've had. I've seen a few of them support me in your channel, so that's pretty cool to have a few fans there. But anyways, um, I'm ready to start when you are. Absolutely well, awesome. And if you guys don't know, DJ does have a YouTube channel as well. It's linked down below. Like we said, you can come and join the Team Judo clan to have a chance to have your attacks analyzed. And if you have any questions, drop them in the chat. So first of all, I have a few questions that I'd like to ask. And also I did receive some questions from the community when we did announce this. So first DJ, the Lava Loon attack. What type of bases are you looking for when you're planning out a Lava Loon attack. Welcome to everyone in the stream, by the way. Yeah, so for the most part, it just depends on what um, Town Hall level I'm looking at, but most of them are very similar. I just try to see if I can get a good kill squad value, so seeing if I can get a few air defenses, making sure that I take down the Queen. If I can't take down the Queen with the kill squad, I try to figure out how I mean, I'm gonna be able to take her down, um, whether it's raging some Lava Pups, because I know there's gonna be a bunch of Lava Pups there, or bringing a Skelly spell. But the most important thing is making sure you take down that queen and create a nice passing for the Lava Hound or the Lalo attack. Awesome. So we've just seen one of your replays that you attacked on one of my bases earlier in the background. I'm going to throw up another friendly challenge for you um, against one of my other bases. I'm giving away all my bases today, guys. And maybe you can break down this base. Tell me whether you think it's a good one for Lava Loon, how you would attack it. If it's not, what type of bases do you not go for? So let's throw that challenge up for you. Like we said, anyone that wants to join the clan, feel free. And DJ can try and attack your base as well. So here's the base. Um, let me know once you've pulled it up and then we can talk yeah. over the base and hopefully you can, you know, you can let us know why it is or isn't a good base. Yeah, so right now, um, this base does look pretty solid. Um, where I'm going to approach it, I'm just going to go ahead and um, try to create a funnel. Um, right here, I see that I can take out the town hall, so get the town hall and get the enemy queen. So that's always some good value, so I'm going to try to do that. But first, I'm going to try to create... Um, a funnel, so I'm gonna send in a baby dragon. I see a Tesla popped out, so I'll send two loons just to get rid of that um, Tesla. Um, as you can see, uh, my baby dragon went down, so didn't get too much value there. Now I'm gonna send a baby dragon over here to get rid of the elixir collector and the gold mine if I can. And now I'm gonna send my wrecker, and here goes a few bowlers just to kind of help take down that archer tower with the bowler bounces. Here goes a king, queen, and the warden. I'm gonna send in a rage spell because I noticed that the wrecker is about to go down. So I use the enemy king. I try to time it perfectly with the um, king ability. So I use the king ability first, then the warden, so I can try to uh, maximize my attack and get the the little barbarians to kind of help out with the cleanup as well because they'll be invincible while the warden's still up. And now, as you can see, I'm, I was able to take down the, the town hall, the queen, and create a funnel. So now I'm gonna go ahead and start the Lalo. Um, if you can, try to start the Lalo if your heroes are still up, cause that'll help with the cleanup. And now I'm just kind of going from here, just hasting, trying to create that path and also closing it up. That way some of the other balloons can go to the core. And then you always wanna save a few loons too for the back end, especially if there's like a bunch of uh, wizard towers. So that's what I'm doing right here. I'm gonna he haste the core, let's see. I, I, honestly, yeah, I can't believe how much you're crushing my base right now. This was not pre-planned, guys. This was a, a base that I've just thrown out. DJ has not seen this, 
and it looks like you are probably going to three star what i was what i was almost hoping like selfishly was that you would fail so that we could watch <laughs> how you adapt the plan and uh and I mean, it looks like you know the pro has came through that is absolutely amazing it's kind of hard to talk and attack at the same time but i'm trying <laughs> Wow. Well, you did more than try, buddy. That was that was absolutely incredible. So it looks like, you know, you you know, your balloons went down a little bit to the end there. But man, that was fantastic. Guys, get some hype in the chat there for DJ. So let me ask you then. One of the questions that was asked by the community was how do you adapt your plan if, you know, if you fail? What, what do you do? What do you look at and analyze to try and improve the next time you hit it? Not not necessarily the same base. But what, what tends to trip you up? What do you tend to, to do after you've failed an attack? So it just depends on the base itself. Sometimes, um, like if I'm going fresh and there's a Lava Hound, my troops can still take down the Lava Hound and still keep going. Like if you guys saw that attack versus DLZ, there was a, a, a Lava Hound, but I still went in with the Queen. If I already know there is a Lava Hound, sometimes if I notice that I can get a better value with the, with the Queen, then I will try to take down the wizard tower or something else and or try to use a queen to be able to create a better funnel that way once i get the funnel going i can send into my king my warden and the bowlers with the valks and then i just rage and try to get the queen and the town hall if possible if i don't get the town hall and let's say that the town hall is in the corner or something i'll try to use a few loons as suicide loons to take care of the town hall but if that's not the case i'll try to take it down with the kill squad or if I can get a good value without the Warden, I'll send the Warden on air and use the Warden ability when the Town Hall is about to go down. Interesting. So, is the, you know, obviously you're talking a lot there about trying to adapt your plan as part of the attack itself. Um, what, time to, what type of things do trip you up then? I'm assuming maybe a Tesla farm that pops where you don't know where that is, or is there anything that you think, man, I hadn't planned enough for that area? Is there anything that tends to trip you up? Sometimes, like like you said, a Tesla farm can um, trip you out, especially if you're trying to start your attack there and you're going fresh because you don't know where the traps are. So that can really mess things up if uh, if that's where you want to start. But usually the kill squad is pretty strong. So if the Tesla farm happens to be where I'm about to hit the base, then it's not too bad. It's only like if the Tesla farm's in the back end, then I try to save a few loons. Like if I notice that all the Teslas pop at 50%, I try to incorporate my loons to try to tank a little bit and heal rage that area unless i need the heal like if there's like a bunch of wizard towers together and i want to make sure that i save that heal spell but if i do okay. happen to have to use the heal spell sooner like uh, because of the tesla farm or whatever then i'll try to save a few loons for the back end for the wizard towers and and go from there awesome yeah no that's great advice because because really like you said it's only if something pops at the end and you've already put your troops down that you can't adapt on the on the fly essentially so we did have um we did have ernie's in the chat there asking if you could attack his base he posted a challenge i'm not sure if it's still up um uh, which one so th there's a couple oh, of people actually i'm not sure which one yeah ernie is let me pull out my town hall 11 then because it wouldn't be so fair if I attacked them with my 12. <laughs> the name of the clan, guys, is Team Judo. Let me pull it up real quick. I did put this out on the um, the post we put out um, prior to starting this. Uh, Brandon is asking for an attack as well. We might not get through everyone, but we'll try our best. Um, guys, if you can friendly challenge with each other, that's kind of the idea as well, because then DJ can look at your attacks and analyze it afterwards. So it's not just DJ attacking, because part of this, I'm going to attack in a minute as well. DJ, maybe we'll do that once you've attacked Brandon here, um, or Ernie, whoever yeah, it is that you attack first. I'm attacking Ernie right now at this time. Awesome, right, let me pull that up. Oh, it's all the way up there. Okay. I mean, if you're happy talking through it, or I can try and talk through it as well. So he's on his Town Hall 11 right now, guys. And again, I'm assuming yeah, so you're right pressing now... through for that Queen straight away. Yeah. <laughs> That's the first thing, for sure. So right now, I took down the enemy Queen. I got some good pathing. I took down part of the core already with my um, kill squad. So now I'm just kind of sending the loons and trying to get that path. So there's a Tesla farm. Luckily, my Lava Hounds were able to tank for that, so I didn't have to worry about that too much. Since there is a Multi Inferno, I'm going to freeze it, heal, and rage just to kind of get through that portion. Yeah. And now I'm going to save a few loons just to help out with cleanup or 
tank that wizard tower but the thing is that wizard tower like as you as you saw the lava hound was stuck on the lava um the wizard tower was stuck on the lava hound so i didn't really have to worry about that one too much it's only when the um what's it called the wizard tower is by itself and all my loons are together is when i worry the most but if my loons spread pretty well then i'm not too worried about the splash yeah, no, that was beautiful. Uh, a question in the chat by Borish is DJ Blimp or War Wrecker, which is your favorite for Lava Loon and why? I'm more of a Kill Squad kind of guy, so I like the Wall Wrecker more, but I have okay. used the Blimp as well, so. But Wall Wrecker would be my primary choice. <laughs> awesome. So, one of the questions I wanted to ask you was. Well, we get to this in a second in terms of how do you go from a beginner, because I very much class myself as a beginner at Lava Loon. I'm not brilliant with it. I'm trying my best, and I, I have got the occasional Town Hall 12 three-star just putting that out there. But do you have a standard army you go from and then build from there? I basically have an army in my quick train, and then I'll adapt the kill squad. Maybe I need to make a bit of a different funnel. Do you have a set army? I've got mine pulled up on the screen now for the chat to see. What type of army do you tend to take? Yeah, so if you actually go to my camp, um, it's fine if you show my base. Um, you can go ahead and see my army camp, army comp. That's the one that I usually tend to take for the most part. Every once in a while, I'll switch a few things, whether it's um, getting a few wizards. Like if I don't see a good value on the baby dragon, um, then I'll take a few wizards and a giant just to kind of create that um, create that funnel for my kill spot. And if that's not if that doesn't work, then I'll I'll bring in more bowlers to, to, to um, take advantage of bowler bounces because bowler bounces okay. really help out when it comes to funneling. Um, it makes a huge difference, especially if you see that your bowler can just take out those two buildings without getting sniped by anything. Awesome. Awesome. So why don't you post a challenge and I'll maybe attack your base and then yeah. you guys can, um, you know, you guys can watch me fail and we can watch DJ analyze my attacks and then we'll go from there. So. Hopefully no one else, I'm actually going to press attack without scouting it, just so that no one else steals it. And let's see what I might do here. Um, my Grand Warden's on ground, so I guess I've got to come in with a squad towards the Town Hall. So I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to come in from the south, actually. Um, yeah, what I think I'm going to do, I'm assuming you're going to have a bomb here, but I am going to put a baby dragon. Let's see, where do I want to put this? I can't make my mind up. I'm going to put one there. <laughs> Just see if I can get the funnel there. Maybe put one loon onto that wizard tower. Um, archer tower, sorry. Didn't quite get that, but I'm actually going to use another loon on that. Okay, that should be enough to then send my golem in alongside a couple of ballers once that starts tanking. Ball wrecker towards the town hall. King, queen, and warden. And then let's use the baby dragon. I'm thinking in this corner to try and help get that down. Okay, no real, uh, no real strategy at the minute, but I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> let's see. So I'm basically coming in like you do, DJ, towards the town yeah. hall here. I don't want my queen to walk the other way here, which I've got a feeling is going to happen. I'm going to press my king's ability. Queen needs to get up there because I kind of want to use the uh, grand warden's ability right now if I can. Just to try and protect that king a little bit but i've kind of missed it i guess let's use it now protect them ballers yeah uh, queen's going on a bit of a mystery tour i'm almost thinking how i'm going to get that giga tesla i'm going to have to um bring in a separate army of um balloons towards that to try and yeah that was probably too many of them as well that was awful <laughs> Yeah, that was a lot of loons. Um, and the thing is, like, it doesn't trigger. So that's something to... to... Oh, they didn't even take it down! Also oh, keep in no! Mind. <laughs> yeah, so stuff yeah, to keep in mind. Mess. So if you want to take down the Giga Tesla, you got to make sure that it's 50%, or um, that way the Giga Tesla pops out. Or some people also use Earthquake, or if they know that a Lava lava Pup's going to trigger it, then they do that. So I usually try to approach that towards the end, or it just depends on the base. Yeah, I think what we're going to do is I'm just going to rage quit, put these down, and I'm going to put mm. my Grand Warden on air and maybe go again if that's all right. And uh, yeah. <laughs> now that I know about that, um, let's see. Uh, Grand Warden on air so I can bring him in towards that. I don't think my kill squad was necessarily too bad. I think I got a lot of value on it. Um, yeah. Let's maybe watch it back and you can maybe 
tell me about the kill squad. I know the rest was just, you know, just didn't work out right. But maybe the kill squad. Would you have came in on this direction like I did? The queen's a little too far, um, so it's going to be a little hard to sniper, and it's kind of hard to funnel that area. So right. I would maybe try to go from... It's, it's just a weird base. Maybe I would try to go towards the town hall section and maybe even bring a jump spell. Um, or even go from like 12 o'clock to get rid of the wizard towers and hopefully I can get to the queen. Yeah, and the, okay. The queen should be able to snipe the town hall possibly. Yeah, it's definitely not a, a good um, a good army, I don't feel, for this base. But what I think I'm going to do this time is use the Grand Warden and use his ability right at the end. So... I'm thinking of coming in from the same area actually and then basically lalloing from the left hand side to the single inferno first up towards the wizard towers at the top and then I'll use that grand warden's ability right at the end towards that giga tesla is my is my plan now knowing that I've seen the base. Yeah. My funnel wasn't really set correctly with that uh with that golem either. I didn't get... Did I even get the queen? No, you didn't get the queen on that one. I didn't get the queen. Okay. Yeah, I'll maybe attack again. And then we'll, you know, we'll let you attack some of the other guys in chat. We'll let you at analyze some of their attacks. Because this is very much for the entire community. Um, and I, I don't want to feel like I'm stealing you on this one. <laughs> but if you're happy enough posting <laughs> that base again, I'll maybe uh, I'll maybe attack yeah. again. And see if we can alter my attack to, uh, to get it to work. Yeah, it's up and running. Oh, it's up and running? Must have missed it. Yeah, like oh, it's up it and okay. ready to be attacked. Cool. So I'm going to do a similar thing. Um, I'm not going to use my loons on that archer tower. I'm just going to use a baby dragon to start off with. That'll be enough to take that down. Um, I'm actually going to... Probably shouldn't have made the funnel this big, actually, but oh well. Oh, I'm not putting that warden in. What am I doing? Nearly put my warden in. <laughs> that would not <laughs> yeah, have been good. To me. <laughs> okay, let's hope I can get the queen this time. Wall Wrecker is getting a little bit further. Let's put that rage spell in ready. Poison under the CC. Come on, Wall Wrecker. Get that wall. Ah, oh, didn't get it. Okay, let's use my king's ability. That's oh, not going to get the archer tower. He is going to get the queen, which is good. That's down. better i haven't saved anything necessarily for that back end wizard tower which i'm a little bit concerned about because i'm yeah. kind of thinking that i'm not going to have enough to get through either way i mean that was definitely a little bit better yeah your warden came in clutch there was thanking for that loon to take out the air to, um the archer tower yeah he went down but either way i wouldn't oh. have got through to that giga tesla and i i obviously didn't have enough to get through them back end defenses i think <sighs> If I didn't have a standard army built here, I would maybe even use um, just suicide heroes to take out that little area at the top. Mm -hmm. And yeah, then maybe some, even try a skeleton spell there. on the queen. That's that's tough. It is a tough base. It is a tough base for sure. But like we said, I'm not I'm not the best at Lava Loon. I'm trying my best to improve. I am going to keep continuing, and that's very much you know. A lot of people are wanting to improve at Lava Loon as well, and that's why I think it's great to get you on and try and get your, you know, your knowledge about this. So that actually brings me on to a good question that I haven't asked up until this point. I, like I said, see myself as a beginner with Lava Loon. You're at that stage where you are, mm -hmm. you know, very, very good with the strategy. We've seen you taking down multiple DLZ bases. How do you suggest, what would your recommendation for people to learn Lava Loon? Like, how would you suggest breaking it down for people? I, to be honest, it's all about friendly challenges. Like, that's how I ended up getting pretty good at the attack. If you're trying a new attack, try it with any base. That way, 
you know, if something crazy happens or a Tesla pops out, you know how to adapt. So attacking live always helps um, getting adapted to these types of attacks. Okay, so just just literally friendly challenges. So one thing that I always tell people is, and I know you do this anyway. Maybe you can, you know, shed a bit of light on why you do this. But I always recommend that people, if they're learning a new attack, take a bigger kill squad, so there's less emphasis on the attack they're trying to perform, and then build from there. Because your kill squad's always going to be similar, whether it's hog riders you use as your attack, you know, lava loon or, or whatever. A kill squad's a kill squad. So if you can get good at recognizing what value you can get out of a big kill squad, then you can, you know, just work the attack strategy itself very minimally on the back end of the base. Um, right. And I know yeah, you definitely. like to take a big kill squad. You always tend to put your warden, from what I see, you, you very rarely put it on air. You always put it on ground with your kill squad mainly. What, what's your kind of rationale with that? Is it just getting deep into I the base to get that queen? Yeah, I've been doing this attack for a real long time since the Town Hall 11 in Red And I just noticed that you just get a bigger push with the warden on ground. And you can usually get like 30 to 40% of the base, which makes a huge difference. And especially we see like key structures like the uh, Eagle Artillery, one Inferno, and uh, a Queen and a few air defenses maybe. Then that's when you know you got a, a real good value on that kill squad. But if I don't see too much of a value with the kill squad, then that's when I would put it on there. But usually there's a way to figure out like how to approach the base and get a good kill squad. Right. Okay. Uh, Lemley in chat is asking if you build many bases. I know you do build some of them. What would you build? So this is kind of similar to what we covered before. How would you try and defend against Lava Loon? So I just recently started building bases. I'm not too great at building. Um, every single time that I've built a base usually gets trashed right away. But the important thing is to, you know, keep your head up and just make changes. If you notice that there was so much value that they got in the kill squad, try to move a few things, try to take out some of that value and and then go from there, just uh, changing the base and then having somebody hit it again the next day or something like that. It is unfortunate about the cooldown, so that makes it a little bit harder to like, you know, keep building and making changes because you have to wait the whole 24 hours. But if yeah. um, even the attacker like can tell you like, oh, well, you know, I got this much here, so it might be better if we move this to the other side. So I really depend on the guys who, who are in the league gaming that are very good builders to ask them questions about like what I should change, what I should move and things like that. Awesome. That's great. Yeah. And and maybe I can get one of them on actually onto, I know my, I do my pro tip series as videos, but maybe I can get them onto a live one as well. Um, why don't we analyze one of these guys attacks? Cause I know, I know we're keeping it relatively casual. Like I said, guys, we're going to be going on for around about an hour. You guys can ask any questions you've got. We can, you know, watch as many of these videos as we can of the replays. Sorry. Um, why don't we watch you Landon versus Mark? you see that one? Yeah, give me one second. Go ahead and start it and I'll be right there shortly. Okay. Well, I have the base pulled up. Um, actually, what we could do before we watch the replay is maybe you can tell me straight up, do you think this is a good base to attack with Lava Loon or not? And why? And then we can watch the replay and you can, you know... You, you can analyze his attack and, and maybe give him a few tips from there. Yeah. I just kind of started this attack versus Dr. Duhan real quick. <laughs> oh, that's fine. No, I'll, I'll so, actually put that live on the stream. I didn't realize you were attacking. Yeah, he wanted me uh, to attack his base for a while, so... Okay, have yeah, yeah, no, I'll, I'll put that on so people can have a watch. I mean, you're the pro at the end of the day, we're watching you attack. Mm, wow. <laughs> This tends to happen with my streams, guys. Whenever I see DJs in and I don't get into that attack quick enough, you just see a couple of defenses left with a whole balloon parade coming over the top of them <laughs> to just wipe it out. Like, man, incredible. So we can maybe watch yeah, that attack back afterwards as well. Um, okay, we're, we're going to make sure to attack Brandon afterwards because he... Um, he was asking for you to attack him about 15 minutes yeah. ago. So we'll we'll watch the attack and analyze what we were going <laughs> to. And then we'll uh, we'll come back. Again, guys, I want to try and keep as many of you guys on here. Let DJ analyze as many of your attacks as you can. Answer as many of your questions. It's a very casual stream, but also something that I think will be very beneficial for people. Hence why I wanted to put it on. And again, thank you for DJ for coming along. We'll try and get more 
um, you know, league players and expert players in here as well to help us out. Uh, just to kind of fit with that structure that we had so that we don't lose too much stuff. Why don't we look at um, that attack we were going to, which was... Yeah, let's do it. Get where it was now. Yolanda versus Brandon? Yes, I'm trying to find it. There it is. Yolanda versus Mark. 82% one star. Oh. Let me check. There it is. Okay. I got it pulled got up it? whenever you're ready. Yeah. yeah, so I'll pause it first, and then if you can maybe, you know, is this a type of base you might attack, or would you not attack this with Lava Loon? Um, it's a very solid base to defend versus air. Um, as you can see, all the air defenses are kind of far away from like from from the Wizard Tower, so it makes it a little bit harder to Lalo. Um, I would still try it just because I usually tend to attack whatever base. I try not to let one hold me down, but if. Uh, it wouldn't be my first choice. <laughs> I would okay, leave that one for that the reason end. of the have, air have defense. Hit it. Okay, and and that's mainly because the air defense are all on one side. Yeah, because it makes it a little bit harder because then um, all the splash damage is on the different side, so then you have to account for the lalo pathing. Usually, if the air defenses are pretty evened out, it's easier to know where your lava hounds are going to go and your loons. But with this one, like, um, if you get a good good kill squad, then you know that they they can go. Um, what is it counterclockwise but you'd have to be right. able to make sure you have a heal spell and a rage spell for like the back end of the wiki towers so i would right. if i were to hit the space i would probably approach it from like a um where the wizard tower is at closer to two and then get okay. the kill squad there and try to take out the wizard tower the other wizard tower and the queen and then i would lalo from 12 counterclockwise and try to haste through those air defenses so i don't get too many loons taken down and then yep. rage heal the infernal tower at six awesome that makes sense why don't we watch the attack you can analyze i mean we've just give uh you land in there a bit of information on how you would attack it but maybe you know spell placement loon placement things like that anything you see fit that you think he could improve on feel free to uh to analyze that so i'm playing it now okay Looks like he's setting up the funnel first with a baby dragon. He's kind of done a nice job, but I don't think he's going to get that elixir storage due to the air defense. And he's using the king himself to create a funnel. So he's obviously attacking in from the, the complete opposite side that you said, actually. Um, but he's still going to be able to get relatively the same value by the queen. Right. He's also got a level one red, so that makes it a little bit harder because it takes a little bit longer. It doesn't have as much HP. So... Um, the, the freeze definitely was very good because it, it helps get your wrecker a little bit farther. Um, yeah. And to be honest, that side is not bad at attacking. You just got to make sure that your, your troops can get in there. As long as you get the queen, that's the most important thing. Yeah, so, so I can see straight away yeah. that um, amazingly he has taken the queen. That his, his queen had walked around, but has decided to come back, which is brilliant. And he has wow. taken the queen, yeah. so he's, he's actually taken so a, a good amount there. So that was some great value. Yeah, that's actually a good way to start the attack. So let's take a look at the Lalo and see what happened or what went wrong. Yeah. I've got that plan now. He's just about put the Lava Hound in. So he wasn't expecting that Tesla farm, so that's one of those surprises. Um, I would have sent in the Lava Hound first just to kind of tank a little bit, but um, yeah. make sure to start the haste spell just so that the loons can catch up with the Lava Hound. That way they're not lacking. Um, with the... With the loons that he sent over there by 12, I would have held on those a little bit until the air defenses went down, just because the Lava Hounds can at least tank for you. Um, with him, his Lava Hounds weren't tanking and the loons were getting hit by the Wizard Towers. Okay. And I would have heal rage where the Wizard Towers were, just so I can get the most bulk and the rage, like once those loons go from that point onwards, they would be able to take out the Archer Tower and possibly the uh, Expo. But I think he would have been able to do it if he would have placed a few loons a little bit better. Like yeah, the 12 I mean, to be honest, all around a good attack, yeah. Yeah, that was a solid attack for sure. He got some great value there. Yeah. Um, okay, I do have a... Um, I had a question. I'm watching that base and it's completely gone out of my mind. Brandon saying he has to go. So are you are you quite happy to attack his base real quick? Because yeah, he did ask when we first started the stream. All right. I think he's just literally put it. Okay, I'm going to attack okay, it now. So we're watching it. Film Gaming, so welcome this one. to the stream. Yeah. 
So for this base, I'm just going to try to funnel. Um, so I wouldn't be able to place the wall wrecker closer to like nine or lower than that just because I wouldn't get too much value. So I'm placing it up there because there's really isn't much that's going to take it down. Um, it should be able to tank a little bit. I'm afraid that my queen's probably going to walk because of the expo, the way it's placed. So most likely that part's going to walk, but as long as my wall wrecker goes through and takes down the enemy queen, that's fine. So there's a lava hound which kind of makes things a little bit harder. Because um, if I would have known that, I, I would have used the Sui queen. So I'm just waiting for this record to go down. I'm just going to use a rage spell because I know it's going to go down. That way the queen can be taken care of. And since I know that there is a lava hound, I'm just going to use a queen ability here in a bit to try to, um, you know, have her be taken down so she doesn't have to deal with the lava hound. But I'm just yeah, going to start yeah. the opposite way with the Lalo. Interesting stuff there in, in terms of the lava hound being on the... Uh you know on the defense and you trying to allow your queen to go down essentially so she doesn't pop it so that's obviously one of them little things that people might not realize which is a, is a fantastic tip to give fantastic i mean obviously there's no infernos on this base so it's yeah, not gonna so it it's not gonna be easier. crazily hard um but I, I still think you did a really good job there on just analyzing what you were doing we did have a couple of questions in the chat which have been quite good actually so um i think we'll maybe go over a couple of them whilst i just put some replays on the background if that's all right yeah that's fine so ernie's has asked a couple of times i will ask it just because um you know it's a valid question if anyone's farming and wants to use this but obviously guys it's going to be incredibly difficult without your heroes but how would you adapt this if you didn't have heroes so I would maybe, like for instance, if I were to do a kill squad one, it's kind of hard because I really depend on the queen a lot. She does a lot of work for me, especially sniping a few defenses that the other troops wouldn't reach. But if the queen was down, then I would send a few wizards just to kind of help with the splash damage. Because if it's a big yeah. dragon, um, it might not go down with poison, so that's going to be very difficult. You can also bring two poisons, but that kind of messes up the whole spell thing and you might not have as many haste spells. So a few wizards would help just to kind of tank and take down the CC. And then I would just um, rage the kill squad portion and then start the Lalo clockwise or counterclockwise, depending on where the air sweepers are located and if I have some good pathing or not. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, I was expecting that kind of answer. Basically, you've got to, you've got to integrate a kill squad into your attack, which takes away from your loons and your actual you know, your actual army. So it is going to be incredibly difficult, but you've still got to have that kill squad to help with the pathing of the, the Lava Hound and things like that is what you're saying. Definitely. Um, Slick 18 asks, what is the best way to take out a Dragon CC for Lava Loon if the CC cannot be lured? So if he's not taking a big enough kill squad, what, what would you try and do? I mean, I'll let you answer. Just, I don't want to put an yeah, answer on you. It depends on the base. <laughs> It just depends on the base, like for instance, if the CC is super far away, but you can still lure the CC with a loon or a, even a hog. I kind of incorporate that and try to like throw in the hog rider as my kill squad is moving forward. That way the dragon comes out and starts heading towards my kill squad and I can still take it down. Um, okay. But it just depends on the base. I might even approach the attack a little bit different just to make sure that I can take down the CC since a dragon will mess up your Lalo portion. Okay. Um, just a couple of other questions, which is obviously I do want to try and answer as many of these. We will go back to analyzing your attacks, but anyone that watches this back as a video on demand, I, th I want to try and give them as much variety as possible. So the Grouch74 asks, any tips on how to place spells? Um, is there anything key you look for before dropping them? I usually try to place, um, depending on the defense itself, at least three to four looms um, per defense. Sometimes I'll place more if I know that those are going to go into the core section. And then I try to haste um, to try to create a better pathway. So if I notice that the path is a little bit harder, then I'll place a haste spell, like let's say at 12 o'clock to kind of close that section and making sure that some of the other looms go into the core. Because if you don't take down that eagle, sometimes that eagle will mess up your whole attack. Okay. And then what about your rage and your heal and things like that? When, when would you decide to take a rage or a heal and and how would you, you know, how would you put them down? Yeah, so for the rage and the heal, you usually some um, high HP buildings. 
So if there's like an Inferno and a bunch of other defenses that are around it, that's when I would use a, a Rage though. Especially if you know that you might not have any loons because Rage loons will definitely take a big section of the of the base. So even if you don't have as many loons, you can take advantage of that and use a Rage spell to kind of get a better value. And as far as a heal spell, it just depends. Um, for instance, um, the, the attack that you're showing right now with Podog, you see those uh, wizard towers? I already attacked this base, but there's like three wizard towers right next to each other. That's where I would use the heal spell, because if not, if the Lava Hound, since there's no wizard towers there, it wouldn't tank as well. I would use a heal spell to kind of keep those loons alive with a haste spell. Or even a rage, because there's a lot of expos there, so that would help get through that section faster. That makes sense. That's awesome. Thank you. Um, Weasel asks, should you always target the Giga Tesla with a kill squad? That's a really important question for him, and he's, he's obviously struggling with that a little bit. So for that one, um, it depends. If you don't get too much, like for instance, if the Queen and the and the Town Hall are in the total opposite size, there's no way to get the Queen and the Town Hall with the Kill Squad, then that's when I would just use the um, Kill Squad without the Warden, and then I would save the Warden for the actual Town Hall. So it just depends on the base, but for the most part, getting the Giga Tesla is important, because if not, it'll take down your Loons, the only way you can save that is if you take it down with the kill squad or if you use like a Sui King, like let's say it's in the corner or something, or if you use the Warden ability. And the Aura also gives them extra HP. So technically, if they go over the Giga Tesla and you heal in time, they might stay alive, especially if you have a Max Warden because it'll they'll have more than 1000 HP. But you have to be very good at timing with that one. Wow, yes. I've never really seen that one, to be honest. Let me expand on that question for you. Um, sometimes I've seen where the Giga Tesla is right at the edge of the base and you can literally path balloons straight onto it. So people do tend to take like suicide balloons. They'll put in a rage spell or, you know, five or six balloons just to snipe that off. Um, obviously, sometimes you can bring the queen, but what happens if it's a couple of defenses in where you can't quite path directly onto it? Would you always just take your warden, or would you maybe bring a blimp, or like, you know, what would your what would you be your plan on that? It depends on how the defenses are placed. But if I know that the pathing will go from the defense to the Giga Tesla, then I'm still fine with just doing a rage and heal with like four or five loons because they'll still stay alive enough to take care of the Giga Tesla. Uh, but as long as you have the Rage and Heal, your, your loons will stay alive to be able to take down the Tesla. Unless, of course, there's like a bunch of Sands or something crazy like that. But for the most part, I've tried it out and at least three to four loons will take care of the Giga Tesla with the Rage and Heal. Wow, there you go then, guys. You learn something new every day because I haven't seen that before either. That's, that's awesome. Um, another question that's obviously at the forefront of a lot of people's minds. How do you decide how many loons to send in behind each Lava Hound? It just depends on the base itself. Um, like I said, if I know that a lot of those loons are to the core, I usually start heavy with the loons because I know that most of the time, like I'm, I'm kind of closing out the other defenses. Like when I place the second Lava Hound, I send in a few more loons and stuff like that. So I usually try to start heavy. And then um, after that, my loons kind of split into the core and to the other defenses. So it just depends, but for the most part, three to four loons, because um, two loons will for sure take it, take down a defense like an archer tower or a cannon, um, if you're a town hall 12. And then for wizard towers, you usually need three to four. So it just depends on where I'm going and how much of the defenses are left as far as like the core. Like if there's a lot of defenses in the core, then I would try to send a few more loons at the beginning. And just make sure that you save some at the end for cleanup, because sometimes the cleanup can be a little bit hard since um, all your loons are together. So it's always important to keep that in mind especially for wizard towers in the back end awesome wow yeah just a mindful of knowledge what, what we'll maybe do if you're okay is we'll go back to you attacking a couple of bases i think co dogs yeah. literally just put a base up there um so you can analyze that any other questions you have drop them in the in, in the chat because we will come back to the questions as well probably going to go for another 20 25 minutes um so any questions please drop them in there and we'll come back to them. So if you're all right attacking Kodog's base, and we can maybe, uh, Kodog, we can maybe see what see. you think from there. I don't see his base up. Or where is it? Oh, there it's it is. Town Hall 11, right at the bottom. All right, let me go ahead and pull up my so Town I, Hall 11. I have it scouted at the minute. So, you know, it's, maybe you can scout it and think about yeah. what you're doing. Or if you're happy, you can just YOLO it and talk to us on the way. <laughs> Yeah, so this base is a little bit harder just because um, it's going to be very difficult for me to get the queen 
since um, if I were to send the, um, what is it called, the war wall wrecker on either side, it's going to be very hard to actually target the queen, especially the way the town hall is placed. So in this case, I would probably bring a blimp. Um, and then just like send a jump spell like where the archer tower is at um, to get into the expo compartment, the air defense, and even the other air defense. And then I would lava from 9 um, clockwise and then just send another lava hound like at 12 to kind of tank for the wizard tower and maybe yeah. even the blimp there. But right now I don't have the, the blimp to be able to do this attack, but I can still try it and tell you what went wrong. I, I can give you a level 1 blimp if you want to try that, but um, unfortunately I can't give you give you anything other than that. Yeah. Um, and also, I think a jump. If you're happy enough to do that, I can I can give you a level one. Let me see. Let me just try it with the wall record first, just to see if I can um, get some good value with it. Even though I think it might be difficult, but just to kind of try it out and go from okay. there. Okay. Cool. Let's see. Yeah, so it's a lot harder to funnel in this one. Um, let's see now. I'll have to use my king because the king's not really doing too much here. Yep. And my queen is definitely not um, going in. I was going to say when you oh. when you placed the queen there, I, I could tell she was uh, not doing doing what you wanted her to. Yeah. So if my king is able to take the queen, I might be able to do something, but it's going to be very hard because I don't have too many things going on there. So yeah, in this case, I would bring a skelly or something just to kind of help with that. But as far as the attack itself, it's going to be too hard to recover from here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's sometimes how it goes. So. Never give up, though. That's that attitude we like to see. You can, you know, not over till it's over, I guess. Let's see. Yep, that was a solid base. Yeah. So I, mean, I would he's, definitely. He's probably gaming. It. It's going to be a solid base. <laughs> mm -hmm. Do you want to? Um, do you want to battle Blimp and see if you can attack it differently? Or yeah, let me. Let me try that out instead. I'm going to exit from this. I'm going to have to drop a wrecker, see if anyone else is requesting. Nope, no one else needs a wrecker. Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'll be right back. I'm just going to go get one real quick. I know where to get one right away. Oh, just dropped Give a wrecker. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. No problem. No problem. Um, are you happy enough answering questions as you're doing that? Can, yeah, can you I can do that. To? Cool. Um, Mark has asked a couple of times, um, how would you adjust the army comp if you have no access to the wall wrecker or battle blimp? So before I actually used to do this attack all the time, so I would just bring a jump spell, um, create a funnel. And I believe Judo has a few videos of this too back when there was no wreckers or anything like that. Um, yeah. So I would just bring a jump spell, create a nice funnel with baby dragons or the wizards. And then after that, just jump into where you can get a lot of value. Sometimes you might have to wall break into the first um, wall compartment and then you can jump into a better section and just make sure that you take down the queen. Um, if you can take down a, an air defense and splash damage if you see that good value there. So that'll kind of give you an idea of where to jump. But the, the main thing is getting the queen and taking a big chunk of the base to kind of create a better Lalo pathing. Yeah, exactly. So it's going to be more difficult because you don't have that siege machine, but still very much applicable. You just have to go back to a more traditional kill squad. Right. Um, Thundercat's been very excited for the stream, and I know we kind of covered it at the start, but he's asked a couple of times um, prior to the show. So I don't know if you want to quickly answer since he's here. What kind of bases do you not like to attack with Lava Loom? What do you look for in a base and think, there's no way I'm attacking that base with Lava Loom? Like with um, Kodogs, I probably wouldn't be my first choice just because the Queen is too far deep and um, with that one, I'd have to approach it from a different angle. So I wouldn't have as many spells as I would like to just because um, that, that means that I have to sacrifice two hay spells for a jump. So that's a, a great example of something that 
you know, might make it a little bit harder to approach. Um, but for the most part, as long as you can get a good value with the with the kill squad and being able to take out the queen, then it's 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 a you have a pretty good chance of taking down the base. If not, it might be better to use a different kind of attack, like a a queen charge Lalo or going ground with hogs or something like that. Awesome, awesome. There you go, um, MJ. Thank you so much for the uh, for the positive feedback. But he always asks, and this is something you you know you kind of hear as a general rule of thumb. But he asks, do I drop two loons per lower HP defenses like archer towers and three for higher HP ones? Or does it not matter since they will clump up? I usually do two to three, um, but for the higher HP ones, I tend to do like three to four just to make sure it goes down. Because the thing is, like, if you happen to not throw in enough um, loons, then your your loons were gonna, are going to be stuck and they're not going to be able to create that nice pathing. So those loons that, like, for instance, let's say there's an Archer Tower and a Wizard Tower, and you send three loons on the Archer Tower and then just two loons on the Wizard Tower, that Wizard Tower is still going to stay up. So the loons that were on the Archer Tower are going to go to the Wizard Tower and then they might not go to the expo because of the way the Lalo pathing is, is set after that. So it's always important to keep that in mind. Okay, great. Uh, the Grouch was asking about the blimp, but we have answered that. You tend to use the wall wrecker unless it's going to be of no value. Um, you'd only use the blimp if the wall wrecker wasn't giving you anything, correct? Yeah, exactly. Like that one with Kodog space. I Kodog really space. There's not really, there's not really too much value. Because the queen is, is deep into the base, so I would approach it differently. Yeah, and we've already kind of touched on this one as well, um, but maybe not as a direct question. Uh, but Rubel asks, when should we deploy haste and when should we, de we deploy rage? So he's obviously asking, you know, on planning the attacks, what is he right. looking for on when to use rage and when to use haste? So the rage bow, I tend to already have an preset mind of where I'm gonna place it so if I see that there's a bunch of like high HP buildings like let's say that there's an inferno a wizard tower and an expo around that area that's where I would place the rage and I would place haste on the other section I tend to place haste towards the beginning of my attacks just because like I said I usually go with a bigger um, loon uh, a bigger amount of loons that I take in at the beginning and then after that I kind of sprinkle them in to create a better pathing but for the most part, I try to haste towards the beginning and I save the rage towards the end or the core. Because the core usually has the ego and a few other things. Um, or I'll save it for the other inferno. So it just depends on how my loons are going to. Sometimes I'll change midways. Like I'll tell somebody, oh, I'm going to use my rage here. But I end up using it somewhere else because I noticed that my loons path a little bit different. So yeah. I usually don't try to say where I'm going to place my, my spells just because it really depends on how my loons are going and where I see the main bulk of my loons. Perfect. Yeah. Um, and we're also, one final question, then we'll go back to, uh, I know you were getting ready to at attack Kodog's base, and then we'll maybe take a couple of questions before we finish up. Um, Archer Queen Walk or Standard Kill Squad? I know your answer to that, but when would you maybe use an <laughs> Archer Queen Walk then? Um, so for that one, sometimes like you'll find expos that are on the outside. Um, that those are pretty good just because you can take them down with the queen without having to worry about the expos being like in a deeper um, section of the base where the queen can't snipe them because if there's like two to three expos that can reach the queen then it might not be a good base to use a queen walk um, so it really depends on the base and then if you can actually find good ways of um, breaking into the to the base i also did a pro tips series with bad boy so that one's a good video to uh, um, check out to see like um, good bases to queen charge but for the most part is knowing like where you can wall break, uh, being able to get those good points to be able to get the um, the pathing for the for the loons. And sometimes you might even have to use the queen ability for an inferno or sending in a rage spell as long as the queen can target the inferno first before getting hit. The queen being raged up can take care of the inferno without the inferno taking her down. And you won't have to use the ability. Awesome. Wow. Fantastic stuff. Um... I know at the moment when I'm trying to learn Lava Loon, like I said earlier as well, anyone that's a beginner, my advice would be, you know, to take a bigger kill squad and just use the Lava Loon as kind of the secondary phase of the attack, which I know it is, but give it less of a role and then you can, as you get better, start to make your kill squad, you know, a bit smaller if necessary, depending on the base, and you can have that larger role of the Lava Loon. That would be my advice, but maybe, you know, following that, I, I might... Uh, I might always consider that queen charge as well, just in the back of my mind. 
Mm -hmm. um, someone put up a three-star attack, which I have replaying, so we might as well have one more question if that's all right. Um, sure. Which one do you not like attacking into the most? Um, wizard towers, sweeper, or bombs? I'm what assuming do you mean the by red that, bomb. I, mean, I think he means what if you if you see an area of the base and you think, oh man, I need to adapt or something like that. Is it is it because it's wizard towers, an air sweeper, or a red air bomb, or a combination? Maybe that, it's, that, I'm just it's using usually his a combination. Direct. Yeah, it's usually a combination. Like if um, there's a bunch of towers, um, it might be a good idea to rage and heal that section, just because if you don't, then your loons will definitely go down. But if, if the wizard towers are next to air defenses, then you might not have to worry that much, especially if the lava hound, like the wizard tower is stuck on the lava hound, because you know that they're tanking, so that's always good. Um, so I always try to keep a, an idea of like where my lava hounds will tank, and if I do need a, a, a heal spell or not. Because sometimes you don't even need a heal spell if everything goes good, and those yeah. lava hounds are stuck on the, on the, uh, the wizard tower is stuck on the lava hounds. Like in this attack that you're showing, as you can see, like at around three o'clock, that wizard tower is just hitting the lava hound and it's not even touching the loons. So that's a good idea of like when you don't really need a heal spell. You might just because right. of the multi inferno, but not because of the wizard tower. Okay, I'll quickly fast forward the attack again, um, just so we can see that little bit, and then we'll go to you attacking Kordog's base, and we'll maybe answer some more questions, and, and we'll finish up because we are getting close to that hour mark, and, and we could literally go on forever and ever. Um, yeah. And maybe you know, maybe we'll do it again sometime if uh, if people you know get that much of a benefit from it, and there's still a lot of questions. Definitely. So yeah, we can see per prime example there how the lava hound is tanking for the uh, you know the wizard tower. The loons got in relatively quickly behind it as well. Cool. So let's. Uh, have you got a battle blimp? And you need me to donate you the level. Yeah, one? I do. I do have one. So hopefully this will work out. Okay. Has he got his base up still? Or oh, there it is. Same town hall eleven. Oh, there it is. All right. So let's see if um, I can get better pathing here. So what I'm thinking is hopefully I can snipe this town hall with the baby dragon without hit so yep i was able to do that and so there is a tesla that popped out so i'm just gonna send one dune i tend to use two but i'm trying to preserve my loons since i don't have as many here yep and it's not and like there's a tower or anything to hit them at that point when you did that yeah so i'm just gonna send my king to tank that way i can use bowlers to take down that mortar and now that the mortar's down i can that's a better funnel so here goes my bowlers. Yeah, that is a much better funnel, like you said. So you've used the Grand Warden's ability relatively early there. Is that just because you still had so many troops up? You had the, the King's, you know, Barbarians yes. out there and... Yeah, so I just did it because the King, I used the King ability and some of my bowlers were there. So I try to save them all just to kind of get a better value. So now I'm going to go ahead and start and so you also got to keep in mind when you have a blimp where the town hall is because if you forget you might send that blimp to a weird section <laughs> yeah exactly that is a very good point because like you say if you brought it in from that side where you just brought the lava hounds in um it, it wouldn't have done anything essentially would it right so right there i just sent in the blimp just to take down the um the core that the, is amazing. The core. That, and that I'm is just amazing. Heal and rage, and hopefully that should be enough. That blimp to the core was fantastic, I have to say, because the pathing of your loons to be able to create that quick enough whilst they had enough coverage to then redirect loons into the core would have been so difficult. But the fact yeah. that the blimp can just drop them there, that was. Honestly, I wouldn't have even thought of that. I know it might seem simple, but I wouldn't have thought of that until I just watched you do it. Yeah, wow. so for there that one, are, I just then. wanted to make sure to get those blimp, that blimp in the middle, just because I knew that my loot weren't going to pass that well. If my kill squad would have gone in a little bit deeper, I would have been able to take down the core, so I wouldn't have used the blimp there. But since I noticed that the blimp, that the core didn't get taken down fully, I used the blimp just to be able to get that um, ego artillery. Yeah, that was, that was a 
fantastic example of the blimp, like I said. Um, it was it was brilliant to see how you analyzed the base initially and then thought, right, now that I've attacked it, I can kind of see what, what went wrong and, you know, why I need this, and then boom, fantastic. Wow. <laughs> um, so we had a, a good question. Is the Skelly Donut still strong with new max level Skellies? I haven't tried the Skelly Donut that much just because more, pe more people, like the bases that we've faced at least, um, are aware of the Skelly Donut. So they usually tend to put a Wizard Tower or Bomb Towers next to it. And that's what ruins the Skelly Donut. I've seen a few people try it, but then there was like a Tesla farm in the core. So that really messed up the Skelly Donut. Um, but I think it should work as long as there's no like splash damage in the core and you can take out the Queen, the CC and the Igor Artillery, you can get some great value. Yeah, yeah, but like you said, it's very selective, isn't it? Um, another good question, can you ask, is it better to use Valks or Ballers in the Wrecker or two Valks and four Ballers like DJ did in the last CCL war? So I have been messing with Clan Castle for a while. I did bowlers, but the thing I didn't like about the bowlers by themselves is that if there's splash damage, like let's say there's a bunch of Valks in the core and the clan castle, the enemy clan castle, or baby dragons, they all die right away, like in first hit, because they barely come out and the splash damage is getting them. So I didn't like that because it was pretty much like I had no CC. So then I started messing around with it and I tried two Valks, I tried three Valks, but I noticed that two Valks and three bowlers, and I've been doing that with all my town halls, like at town hall 10, 11, and 12, I do two Valks and the rest bowlers and then I'll take a Barbarian. And that usually tends to work very well just because of the fact that the Valks will usually run forward, trigger any traps, and then the bowlers in the back are still staying there and they don't get taken down right away. So they can they can still get some good value and they don't get taken down by the clan castle. So that's why I've been adapting to that and that's the best CC for me so far. Wow, yeah, that's, I mean, if I'm honest, I've, I've very rarely seen it. I did see it in your attack the other day that we obviously featured. Um, but I'd never even thought about it like that. So fantastic stuff. Very good <laughs> advice. I, I will certainly be messing around with that as well. Um, we have a player here that is new to Town Hall 11. Um, he has the Lava Hound. He loons at Town Hall 10 levels. Do, does he, do you recommend, sorry, I couldn't read the question. Um, he's, uh, he's trying to translate it. Does DJ recommend to use the strategy against Town Hall level of my level or should he upgrade the troops? Um, so as far as like uh, town versus town I mean, levels, yeah. I mean, I think we know the answer is going to be it depends on the base uh, yeah. level, and if it's a max level, you're going to struggle more, so you're going to have to upgrade your troops. Um, but I think what his question, what he probably meant to say with his question is, should you upgrade the lava hounds and loons first, or are there any other troops at town hall eleven you would recommend upgrading? Well, that's actually going to be a personal choice just because everyone's different. I know that not likes Lalo. I at first didn't like Lalo, to be honest. I was more of a ground guy, so I used to use bowlers or hog riders. But then once I started using Lava Hounds, somebody like challenged me to start using Lava Hounds. I like, failed hardcore, didn't even get a one star. So, <laughs> so I said, OK, I need to get good with this. And I started friendly challenging and I started getting um, uh, pretty good at that. At that time, I was, I was watching um, Clash with Ash, and that's how I kind of got into Red Elite at first just because okay. I, I liked the videos that he showed and I learned Lalo from him. And then after that, I started using my own attacks and um, just kind of adjusting from there based on the meta or different things like that. So it just depends if you are a Lalo person or if you want to learn Lalo, but some people will prefer Hog Riders or Bow Witch attacks. So it just depends on each person and their strengths. I would say focus on the attacks that you like first because that's what you're most likely going to use in war. Yeah. Great answer. And he's saying thank you there as well. So awesome. Thank you for answering that. Um, I think what we'll maybe do is, since I had a con complete flop, since you put up a really difficult base, is I'll maybe attack one of your other bases. Um, or maybe even someone else if there's a Town Hall 12. There's not. So I'll maybe... Yeah, there's a I mean, Town Hall 12. Um, Chief Sagi, I think. Sagi. Up there, four minutes oh. up. Okay, so what we'll do out. then, because D he, he's asking for you to attack it, maybe I'll attack it first, and then you can attack it after me, and you can tell me what you would and wouldn't change, essentially. Yeah, sounds good. Um, I mean, I already have a golem built in my army, and I probably wouldn't take a golem on this base, to be honest. I don't think it would give me too much more value than what I need. Um, 
So I might just quickly drop it and give myself more loons. I'm trying to quickly analyze what I want to do here. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, I think I'm going to drop that, I um, that. <laughs> drop that golem. I don't think I need it. Five ballers there. I think I'm just going to take more loons. Maybe another baby dragon, just in case my funnel is messed up. Drop that golem. Okay. So what I'm thinking, looking at this base, I'm going to put a BB Dragon on the army camp at uh, 4 o'clock, because that's quite easy to funnel. Just let the BB Dragon go down to the, uh, well, go up, sorry, to the Builder's Hut. I don't, do I want to lure this? Yeah, probably do want to lure that CC, so I'm probably, probably actually going to come in from the south instead. Come in from 6 o'clock, because I'll still get the Queen from there, I think. Two air defense, the Eagle, and then I can Lalo from... You know, left or right side, it doesn't really matter at that point, I don't think. So I'll just go for it. Oh, I start my Grand Warden on air. Damn. I was going to use him on ground. So we'll you just might. have to hope that he's going to still be okay here. <laughs> so let's put Wrecker in. Ballers on either side. King. Queen. And I'm kind of going to have to just use the... I plan to use the Warden here with them, so... He's gone down! Oh, Sam. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Someone commented on my video the other day, and I think it's a fantastic idea. Why can't we toggle the Grand Warden ground and A once you've started an attack? You know, that I little seriously the two arrows? That as well. Yeah. I'm going to quit and start again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what on earth? Okay. But yeah, Supercell, if you do watch this, I think that's a fantastic idea. Um, oh, Chief Sagi, if you're okay posting your base again, never even thought that's... Uh, traps aren't obvious on that. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Uh, right, we'll see if there's any other questions. Um, it doesn't look like there is. I think we've covered all of the questions that we've had. Obviously, people can watch it back over as well in order to, to catch any of them answers. Um... Borish was asking if you were okay to attack his base. Okay, there's Chief Sagi, so we'll go for this one again. Mm -hmm. I know... My wall wrecker actually didn't get too far there, so I'm going to put my king down first, I think. Yeah, just wait a little bit as far as... um, Wait until the archer tower starts hitting the, the wall wrecker on the left side, because your bowlers were getting sniped. So something to keep in mind, too. Okay, because my wall wrecker went down before it even got to the second wall, which I need it to get through. Yeah, that's true. I Yeah, I like to bring freeze, like, if there's too much, too many single point defenses or an inferno. Okay, that's a good point. Let's bring a freeze. <laughs> you said it, DJ. We're going to do it. <laughs> okay. Off we go. Warden's not been changed, has it? I thought I did, the Grouch. I thought I did. Yep, you're creeping me out. Okay, let's go for it. So I think my funnel was absolutely fine with my baby dragons. That worked no problem. Yep, down they go. Then I'm actually going to put the king in first. Wall Wrecker. Need to hope I get the enemy Archer Queen here, but they're obviously not uh, not getting as far into the base as I as I thought they might. I'm gonna get the Eagle. Lava Hounds popped. War Wrecker has amazingly went through and got that uh, Eagle Artillery, mm -hmm. and the Queen is gonna yeah, go the other value. way. So I did get good value. I think it was good coming from the south, but the Queen is now going the other way. So I'm gonna have to just. Try and get these loons in very quickly to here and pass them directly into the core if I can. It's not going to be the easiest thing. I kind of wanted the loons to go up there. Get that value, but... We're obviously getting blasted by that sweeper massively. 
Yeah, the sweepers can really mess up a Lalo attack. Honestly, guys, I'm not this terrible at Lava Loon. I know I'm not doing great, but I'm not normally this bad. <laughs> Pressure. Oh, that's my excuse. Man, that was awful. Absolutely awful. Let's see how a pro does it. At least at this point, what we can do is have, you know, DJ look at this attack and analyze where it went so wrong and then have him attack it to do much more. Because at the end of the day, I don't care if my fails are shown on the internet. We all fail from time to time. Just I might fail a lot more than other people. And I, that's how we learn. We're going to learn from this. So if you're okay, DJ, ask kind of watching that attack, telling me exactly what you would have done, what you wouldn't have done, and then we'll watch you attack it. And then um, if there's any other questions, we'll answer. Or if not, we will um, we'll end the stream there. Yeah, that's a tough base to attack just because of all, those, um, all the stuff that's in the bottom section. Um, I think a few Valkyries would help get the Queen. It might be a little bit hard to get the enemy queen just because of the way the base is set up. So I would maybe yeah. approach it a little bit differently, like closer to 2 o'clock. Um, it's just going to be rough when I do the Lalo pathing from 6. So I'll just have to probably heal rage that section if I can. But um, if yeah, if he's there to post it, I'll try to hit it and see how it yeah. goes. <laughs> I mean, now knowing that there's a Lava Hound in the CC, I definitely wouldn't have attacked from down the south. Mm -hmm. I probably would have attacked from the east and came direct into the queen. Um, yeah. But you're saying you're going to come from the north? From 12 o'clock? Um, no, like around east. Kind of like northeast section, like oh. towards the middle. Just okay. to kind of try to funnel better and take out the queen, the inferno, wizard tower. And then after that, I'll probably try to lala from six just because if I do that, then I won't have to deal with the sweepers. So I might be able to get better pathing. It's just going to be hard at 6 o'clock because of all the defenses that are there. So that might make it harder. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll watch you um, we'll watch you do this. And then, you know, any other questions, drop them in the chat. We'll quickly answer them. And then we'll uh, we'll wrap up the stream from there. Because I know we said we're going to aim for around about an hour. And we're, we're over running. And, um, you know, you're a very busy man. I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to do this. Oh, no problem. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if he's up, um, if he's able to post a base, that'd be awesome. If not, we can he's try not. a different base or... Oh, yeah, he's just put it open. Thank you so much, Chief Saggy, for uh, doing this as well. Let's see. Actually, 3 o'clock might be better. Just approaching it from the east side, like how you said. Are you so attacking on your 10? I know you're good, but... <laughs> oh, I didn't realize that. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Can we repost that? <laughs> I forgot which account I was on. Man, I was gonna say, this guy has got some serious confidence. Not that one. <laughs> <laughs> I would have noticed once I didn't have my warden. <laughs> All right, let's do this. <laughs> okay. So you're with this one, setting... I'm just going to wait. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say, you're obviously setting the funnel on them army camps, kind of similar to what I did, because the, the nice funnel and buildings, easy to take out, nice and big. Um, and, and that's obviously the best to do with the baby dragons. Yeah. Yeah, so this is where I was originally going to come from until I seen the clan castle. And then since it had so a lava hound in it, I probably should have just came from here anyway. So this one, I use a warden ability sooner just because I want to get into the core section. Yeah, you just I missed can. that giant bomb as well, which was nice. If my bowlers could take out that town hall, it'd be awesome, but I don't think it's going to yeah, happen. They... I'm just going to start the attack. Very close, very close. They nearly got it. Yeah, watching your attack and then my attack. Man. <laughs> yeah, this is a rough base for sure. Definitely more accessible coming from the east though, which... You know, I'm going to rewind it back. I'm pretty sure that... Uh, 
But I did say I was going to come from the east until I noticed that fine castle. I like the use of them loons on the back end. I still think you're going to get this. I mean, you've got more than enough loons. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that was a rough entry point, but I was still able to take down the core section. If I would have been able to save the warden a little bit, um, a, a little bit later, I would have been able to take down the town hall with my kill squad. But because I wasn't able to, I had to t send in the loons that way just to kind of path them towards the core, which is a little bit hard, as you saw the the loons were about to go away from the town hall and sur surround it. It would yep. have been harder if it was a level five town hall for sure, because of the bow the bomb and you know more targets getting taken down. Yeah, awesome. Um, I'm just going to quickly see if there's any other questions before we wrap things up. Um, learned so much this video. Laloon is definitely one of the more sophisticated attacks. Thank you so much for the informational video. Thank you so much, MJ. I appreciate that. Best way to attack a Town Hall 10 donut base. Um, I suppose that's not directly related to Laloon. I don't think there's any other questions. Uh, Madder asking about the Valkyries and Ballers and the War Wrecker. We literally just answered that, um, you know, 10 minutes ago. DJ likes to take two Valkyries and then three Ballers um, so that the Valkyries can protect the Ballers. Um, thank you so much for everyone for joining. Yes, we did have another good question, actually. One final question. Uh, Weasel asks, how many baby dragons for funneling? And when do you bring I other baby dragons? I usually bring two. Um, I rarely bring three. If I know the Sam, then I'll use a just to kind of take down the Sam and then I'll send in the baby dragon. Every once in a while, like if I want to create a better funnel, I'll send a loon and two, loon, I mean a baby dragon and two loons to take down the Archer Tower. If I can take down the Archer Tower without any trouble. Like if there's an air defense that's too close, then I wouldn't do that just because it would just be a waste of troops. Um, yeah. But if there's like an air defense outside, I would send in like a giant and a few wizards or something like that just to kind of create a better funnel. Awesome. Yeah, brilliant answer. And thank you everyone for joining. Thank you again so much to DJ for, for doing this. Uh, he does have a YouTube channel, DJ Clan Smasher. Um, I think you're planning to go back to it relatively soon. Is that right? Yeah, so right now I've been busy because I've had a bunch of tests and stuff that I've had to take. Um, I'll be a little bit, um, I'll have more time closer to September, but I'll definitely start doing that once CWO starts. Not the preseason, but the actual CWO worst. So that's when I'll start doing recaps and stuff for um, White Temple and Elite Gaming for the most part and see if I could throw in anything else other than that. But that'll be my main focus, CWO or worse. Awesome. Fantastic. Well, pop on over there, DJ Clan Smasher. You'll be able to see Elite Gaming, uh, much like you do on my channel. DJ will just obviously give his, his take on things, be able to give you a more technical answer probably with the attacks and obviously explain his attacks um anyone that does get to watch this back feel free to you know pass on information that you've learned from this to your fellow clashers any other questions drop them down in the comments i'll maybe try and ask dj them you know privately afterwards and, and message you the answer or i will um you know i'll get him back on again if he's happy enough to do that but any closing words dj before we wrap up no, that'll be it. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Awesome. There we are then, guys. Thank you so much. That's going to wrap it up for this one. I don't have a schedule as such for the Pro Tips Live series. It is something that I'll probably do just spontaneously with my Pro Tips series that I do on the uh, the videos on demand just because it just becomes a bit of a nightmare to try and get people on if we do it weekly and things like that i'd far rather have quality guests selected and do it just spontaneously but you guys will get to know about it beforehand on twitter on discord all of them different things obviously will be announced like it was on this one so again thank you so much dj thank you for all the questions guys i hope you did enjoy it until next time peace out